2020, a crazy year for baseball and sports in general. This year, not only was every team affected, but every player, coach, assistant coach, general manager, owner, and everyone else a part of every franchise was. This was no different for the New York Mets, who had gotten through 20 spring training games before the COVID-19 pandemic put a halt to their season. March 11th was their last game, and the Mets would not take the field again until July 18th for two more preseason games, then finally get underway with some regular season baseball on July 24th. They had to wait 129 days between games with only two games of practice before the regular season began. This season for the Mets was always going to be a hard one as it was going to be for every other team, but it got a little harder because on March 27th, only a few days after the season would be delayed, star pitcher Noah Syndergaard would have Tommy John surgery and miss the entire 2020 season. As if that didn't hurt the Mets' starting rotation as it was, on August 10th, only a little bit more than a month before the season was to begin, the next best Mets pitcher Marcus Stroman opted out of the season. So just like that, a season with high expectations for the Mets loses a lot of its hope, losing their second and third best pitchers. After lots of heartache for the Mets with players not even taking the field yet, opening day comes. It's July 24th and the Mets, led by Jacob deGrom, take the field at home against the Atlanta Braves. And the Mets showed up to perform. Although the bats didn't light it up on this day, the pitching did. Jacob deGrom only allowed one hit and one walk with eight strikeouts through five innings. A pretty dominant display by the Mets ace. But the best had yet to come. Yoana Cespedes, who had not played in an MLB game in 735 days, hits the go-ahead home run in the seventh inning to win it for the Mets. A sign of hope for a player who had not played in so long, and a sign of hope that the Mets could hang around with the top dogs, like the Atlanta Braves, and maybe make something of this season. But sadly, the Mets opening day party didn't last long at all. The Braves would beat them the next two days, including a 14-1 blowout, which would have the Mets fans set straight about what kind of season they were about to have, and show that the Grom was not enough in that rotation. The next series was against the Boston Red Sox, where the Mets would win the first two games 7-4 and 8-3. Sadly, the Mets sitting with a winning record at 3-2 was not going to last long at all. The next day, the Mets would lose to the Red Sox 6-5 after having to lead most of the game but allowed three runs in the eighth inning to end up giving the game to Boston and only losing by a run. That was only the start of a five-game losing streak that would also see the Mets lose to Atlanta again when they gave up five runs in the eighth inning to lose by one run again 11 to 10. At the end of the series against Atlanta, the Mets find themselves at 4-7 and seven and down a player. Sunday, August 2nd, the third game in the series against the Atlanta Braves, a player never showed up to the stadium. Yoena Cespedes have opted out for the rest of the 2020 season and never informed anyone about it, and this would bring an end to his time with the New York Mets. The Mets would split the next series against the Washington Nationals going 1-1, one one, with the only significant thing happening for the Mets is former Cy Young winner Rick Porcello, who would go on to have a terrible season with the Mets, got his 150th career win. The next series against the Miami Marlins would end up being a pretty good one for the New York Mets, as they would actually win the series going 2-1. Once again, every time something good would happen to the Mets, something bad had to happen right after. In the first game of the series against the Nationals, Steven Metz took the mound. He allowed 8 runs off 8 hits and only 4.1 innings pitched, and once again showed that unless the ground was pitching, there was little to no hope that the Mets starters could get the job done. The Mets would bounce back a little and end up splitting the series 2-2, so after 20 games into the 2020 season, the Mets had a record of 9-11. Things would not be getting any better from there as the next day started a series against the Philadelphia Phillies where Bryce Harper would get a walk-off hit against the Mets, and the Phillies would end up taking all three games of the series sweeping the Mets. Following was a six-game series against the Miami Marlins where the Mets would win the first three, being their longest winning streak of the season so far, and also end up winning the series taking four out of the six games. So things do start looking a little better for the Mets as they were just about halfway through the season. But that series win came with a consequence, as the Mets were supposed to play the New York Yankees between games 3 and 4 of that series, but an unnamed New York Mets player would test positive for COVID-19. Fortunately, everyone would remain healthy and no one missed any long-term action. The Mets and Marlins game tonight has been postponed. Uh, the Subway Series was set to begin tomorrow. That has now been postponed. Game 1 uh, is, has been postponed. So because of the delay after playing Miami six games in a row, 
The Mets now will go and take on the Yankees for a five-game series. The first two games were both seven-inning doubleheaders, and the Mets were finally the late ralliers as they scored five runs in the sixth to defeat the Yankees 6-4. to four. The second game was even better as Ahmed Rosario would hit a walk-off home run in Yankee Stadium to sweep the doubleheader from the Yankees. The next three games against the Yankees did not go as good. Dylan Batances would throw a wild pitch for the Yankees to win. Then, the next game, the late rally was done in return as the Yankees would score five unanswered runs to tie it in the seventh and walk it off in the eighth. The losing streak would continue for the Mets as they would lose a one-game series against the Miami Marlins and then lose again against the Baltimore Orioles. The Mets would go on to win the next two games, including one from the Orioles, but an even more important one from the Yankees. In the ninth inning, J.D. Davis tied the game for the Mets. Then the tenth inning, with a man on second, Pete Alonso hit a walk-off home run to beat the Yankees 9-7. The Mets' next series was against the Philadelphia Phillies, where they would split the series 2-2, two two, but the third game, the Grama put on a performance for the ages, allowing only three hits and one run, while striking out 12 batters in seven innings. Not only that, but this was one of the most well-rounded games of the year for the Mets, as they scored 14 runs off 17 hits, dominating the Phillies in a 14-1 win. After that, the Mets would split a series with the Orioles 1-1 one and, one and make their record on the season 20-24 with 16 games left to play. Then on a day where the Mets would wear the NYPD hats and support the New York Police Department, the Bats would wake up as they score 18 on the Blue Jays, including a 10-run fourth inning to defeat the Jays 18-1. But the Mets once again end up losing that series as the Bats went very cold and lose the next two games. The next series would end up being a little better for the Mets as they take 2 of 3 from the Phillies and in Game 2 would be losing by 1 going into the 8th inning but would score 1 run in both the 8th and 9th inning to take the game. They would also score 4 in the 9th inning the next night to ensure a 10-6 win. But once again no good things last for the 2020 Mets as the next game against the Atlanta Braves, the Braves would score 15 runs while hitting 6 home runs in a dominant win for the Braves over the Mets. 15 to 2, and the Mets would end up losing the series, only taking one of three. And to stay consistent, the next series, the Mets would only take one of three as well against the Rays. And in game two, would score one run in the sixth, seventh, and eighth innings to win the game 5 to 2. To end off a terrible season for the Mets, they finished off against the last place Washington Nationals, and things didn't go well even against a last place team. They took game one, but would end up losing the last three games of the season, including the very last game being a 15-5 blowout that would see the Nationals score five runs in the third and six in the fourth, meaning that Met fans knew the season was really already over early in the day. So although another season is over and once again the Mets have underperformed with so much going wrong and getting in their way, whether it be players opting out or losing games when they had big leads late, at the end of the day, the Mets finished the season with a 26-34 and record and did not make the playoffs. But that's okay because another season will be on the rise soon and anything can happen. With a new owner and money to spend and the Mets starting new with a 0-0 zero zero record, you always gotta remember, you gotta believe and let's go Mets. I don't just want to get into the playoffs. I want to win a championship.